So is it a turning point for French politics? Emmanuel Macron's ruling party in crisis after the far right threw its weight behind an immigration bill stiffened after a parliamentary compromise. The government insists it had the votes without Marine Le Pen's party. But as we'll see, there's more than one way to read the outcome. An ideological victory hails Le Pen, whose national rally is now the largest opposition party in parliament. The uh, definitive end of pariah status for a movement with a Nazi collaborator passed. Where does it leave France's term-limited president? The next presidential poll's not until 2027. That's a long time. In a nation where a lot of power is concentrated at the top, will Macron's successor be able to argue, as he did uh, back in 2022, that those who disagree with him should hold their noses to block Le Pen? There's also a broader question, whether it's France, the UK, the Netherlands. Why is immigration the issue that's got governments on the back foot? The crisis in France erupting on the day the EU agreed to what it bills as its biggest immigration reform in decades. Spoiler, it toughens the rules. What outcome when citizens vote in EU elections next June? Today in the France 24 debate, we ask what, uh, could, about what could be Marine Le Pen's breakout moment. With us, member of the French Parliament, Mireille Capot, member of Emmanuel Macron's Renaissance Party. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Thanks as well to Jeremy Stubbs, deputy editor of the news website Causeur. How are things? Great. Uh, from Lyon, journalist Léa Chamboncel, host of the French politics podcast Popol, your latest book, Au revoir, Simone, Manifesto for a Political and Revolutionary Feminism. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, François. Commentator Jakob Hassler is with us as well. How are you, sir? Very well. Good. Be your reactions on the hashtag F24 debate. Now, we knew there'd be drama when Emmanuel Macron's party failed to secure an outright majority in last year's legislative elections. We just didn't know how much drama. The far right catching the government and the rest of the opposition wrong footed when it announced in the morning on Tuesday it would oppose an amended immigration bill, but then said it would vote for it. And in the end, all the far right. The Conservatives, most of the centrists, and 133 MPs from Macron's party voting for the measures. Now, there were 17 abstentions and 20 against, among them yourself. Mireille Clapeau, tell us about your, your decision. Why did you vote against this bill? Yes, I voted against this bill because uh, it was not the announced bill. In the beginning, we were told that uh, this uh, um, new bill uh, about immigration would be balanced between uh, firmness and uh, humanity. And uh, at the end, with uh, all these uh, uh, episodes, uh, we got a text that was uh, not satisfying and that was tainted with the national rally ideology, which uh, does not fit with my values. Therefore, I had to vote against it. Was it an easy or a difficult decision? It was a difficult decision because uh, it could be interpreted as uh, being uh, an opponent. And of course, I'm not an opponent. I'm from the left wing of the majority uh, party. Uh, but I want uh, this uh, mandate, Emmanuel Macron, Elizabeth Bourne, uh, to be successful. We have a lot of reforms to do. But I was quite sure that when you open this box of immigration, you hear some terrible things about uh, immigrants and uh, it can uh, lead to this situation with good measures, but not a balance and uh, too many bad measures. Uh, too many measures tainted with uh, uh, almost a hate or mistrust uh, against these immigrants. And although uh, the fact that uh, they work uh, uh, in uh, French fields, uh, uh, like uh, restaurants, uh, like um, a personal uh, help to people. And so we, we don't have to mistrust them. Uh, they are here and we have to be uh, firm but human with them. You mentioned the, uh, your political DNA. Uh, just a reminder for our viewers, uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron's party founded from scratch and it brought together uh, a lot of people who came from civil society, others who came uh, from uh, the center right, from the conservatives, and others from the socialists. To socialists, it feels like a second betrayal, the ones that are still in the Socialist Party, when votes in favor of the bill came from some former party members who defected to Emmanuel Macron's party back in 2017. Uh, watch the moment in Parliament where opposition MP 
uh, Gail, Jerome Gedge publicly calls out a former comrade. And there you see him uh, walking, uh, walking away, uh, saying, uh, you betrayed uh, Mireille Clapeau. How, how, how um, tense was it yesterday at parlim in Parliament? Yes, uh, it was tense. Uh, it had been tense uh, during uh, the few last days because there was a negotiations. Uh, you certainly know this uh, mix um, uh, um, uh, negotiation commission with the senators and deputies. It's what they call in the United States resolution, <clears throat> where they have uh, members of both houses of parliament who come together after... Exactly. Uh, we call it in French CMP, Commission Mix Paritaire, and we knew uh, it would be a difficult negotiation. Uh, our prime minister was very much involved, maybe too much involved because it's supposed to be a discussion be between the parliamentarians. And uh, here it seems that the prime minister and even President uh, Emmanuel Macron were involved. And uh, at the end, even uh, if they did their best, it was impossible when you come from uh, a text that was uh, voted in the Senate and that was very, very hard against uh, migrants, it was very hard to come back to a balanced text. So therefore, yes, uh, it was tensed. We discussed between colleagues, uh, will, you, will you really vote for, will you really vote against, will you abstain? And at the end, uh, I was um, one from the 20s that uh, voted against. And I, I think that it's good to stop and to tell officially, no, we don't want um, far-right ideology to come uh, into uh, our majority and into our bills. All right, at least seven cabinet members expressed reservations about this reform bill, but only one uh, has resigned. It's the health minister, Aurélien Rousseau. Uh, it's quite significant, though, even if it is only one. His previous job was chief of staff to the current prime minister. Uh, Elisabeth Born, Léon Chambon said, how much of a crisis uh, are we in politically in France? Well, um, in France itself, it's, uh, it's interesting to see how there is a reshuffle, basically, of uh, the roles of the institutions. Uh, let's take the Senate, for, in for instance. It's, a, it's usually known for not being very popular when it comes to uh, public opinion. Most of the French citizens do not understand what the, the Senate does. And uh, even Macron had made some uh, comments about the you know, the role of the Senate in 2019 uh, during the Gilets jaunes crisis, the Yelves crisis. Uh, what's interesting to today is to see that uh, at the end, the Senate had been a key player in this, uh, in this reform, in these discussions, because um, we see that Macron has a very, very low majority at the Assembly. The struggle that he went in order to be um, able to have uh, enough votes also. So, so, so is this, is this a crisis for uh, the French government or is this a crisis for French politics right now? It's a crisis for the French government because since, since June 2022, what happened is that uh, Macron has not the opportunity anymore to be having his own interpretation, which is really presidential of uh, the, the fifth constitution. Today, he has to deal with uh, with the political parties at the National Assembly. So what he was doing is he was trying to be able to build an, an alliance with the Républicains uh, through the Senate. And this is also why the debate started again, restarted at the Senate, because um, traditionally, that kind of uh, big bill as this one will be starting to be to be um, examined um, <clears throat> at at the National Assembly. So he actually managed to have this deal with the Senate, with the right wing, um, on the purpose also to be like implementing uh, very likely a far right, um, far right, uh, you know, like. Um, uh, ideology. This is what Marine Le Pen said. And the situation now for Macron is that what he was hoping to be able to be, you know, settling down a majority, um, an alliance through the Senate. And, and, it, and it, didn't, it didn't transpire this way. But, but that, that's uh, because yeah, fundamentally we have... Jacob Hess, part, sorry. Yeah. At, at the, at, at the, 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 what Lea is pointing out is important, that Absolutely. you have you have a system where Usually, it's the executive branch of government in France that <clears throat> drives legislation. Now you have 
uh, the fifth the, now you have the now you have legislative power suddenly, and the government got outfoxed. Well, it's I think it's it's a situation that the Fifth Republic did not foresee. We have a hung parliament where basically the president doesn't have a majority. And there's a history to this bill, which I think is very instructive, because there was another slightly more balanced bill, but there was a coalition of La France Insoumise and conservatives to actually, in order to avoid the government pushing it through with their executive powers of the 14, of Article 49.3, yes. they didn't put it on the agenda. That was the power they had. And because... A procedural... Were, uh, yeah, but that procedural move made it impossible to have a vote, which then made it impossible for the government to use the 49.3. And that is what the real structural crisis is. We have not a situation like... I mean, there was cohabitation <clears throat> before. But in the cohabitation before, when you had a president from one party, you had an absolute majority for the prime minister supported by the other party. Today we have a prime minister who has the st represents the strongest party, but who hasn't built a stable coalition to have a real stable majority. And so they decide to play by they, deci work. they decide to play by parliamentary politics. The end result is the vote gets passed, and among those voting in favor is the far right. What's the consequences? I think the consequence well, the consequences are that he is that now the, the emperor is naked. Everyone now understands that he doesn't have agenda-setting power as much as he wished, and that, in fact, he, I don't know how he thinks he will finish his term, but it's going to be very tough, because once happened, this can happen again. Can it be solved through a cabinet reshuffle, Jeremy Stubbs? I doubt it. Uh, although there will be a, a reshuffle, Bring in a no few doubt. more conservatives into power. Well, that would also look like weakness, because this, at the moment, already seems to be the triumph of the right. And if, say, uh, Bruno Le Maire from the right of uh, the majority comes in as prime minister, it would, it would look as though Monsieur Macron has no power, but is simply obeying, uh, you know, circumstances. Uh, and one of the real lessons here is, today, you cannot underestimate Marine Le Pen as a strategist. Yeah. She's just achieved the maximum by doing the minimum. That is a master class. I mean, it was Les Républicains who did all the work of rewriting this bill. Um, and she waited for her moment and said, right, we'll vote now. And that has created, uh, I think, a division within the majority and also brought her, sub her kinds of subjects onto the front of the agenda. You heard Mireille Clapeau at the outset of this conversation explaining why she voted against uh, it, it, the... Uh, uh, the uh, we're, it could, we see uh, that it could be a turning point for French politics. How much, though, of a turning point, this immigration bill for French law? Clémence Valler has more. A victor's smile from the leader of the French far-right party after the adoption of the government's immigration law. Late Tuesday, the lower house of parliament, the National Assembly, voted on the proposed text with 349 votes in favour and 186 against. At the heart of the controversial bill, three key measures that are seen by the left as a break with French values and that the far-right claims to have inspired. First of all, a reduction in state subsidies. Foreigners who legally reside in the country will receive less welfare benefits and will be subjected to a waiting period to access them. Next, the end of the automatic right to French citizenship. Previously, children born in France to foreign parents received automatic citizenship when they reached 18 years of age. Under the new law, a young adult will have to express the desire to become French between the ages of 16 and 18. And finally, foreign students wishing to study in France will have to pay a deposit. However, the exact amount is currently unknown. The head of the French far right saluted the bill. We can still celebrate an ideological breakthrough, an ideological victory for the national rally, since the law now enshrines national priority. In other words, the advantage is given to the French over foreigners. Dozens of NGOs have slammed what they described as potentially the most regressive immigration law in decades. 
Now the bill will be presented to the Constitutional Council. It could remove measures that distinguish between the rights of French citizens and those of foreigners living legally in France. Yeah, this uh, needing to ask for uh, citizenship, that's one of the issues. Jakob Hessler, uh, in your native Ger uh, Germany, it's bloodlines that matter for, for obtaining citizenship. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ger Germany has a very fundamentally different system. You are German... Is the French system changing now, becoming more mm. like the German system in that regard? It seems like it becomes more like the German system. That notwithstanding, Germany is accepting a gr much greater number of actually asylum mm. seekers every year than does France, with its own... comes with its own problem. But but I think, technically speaking, you can have one and the other. I think it's more the symbolic value in France that it is one, the, 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 the pure droit du sol, as it's called, the, is a symbolic value. And I think that's why they put it in, because it's going to split the center left exactly the way it did. And I think that's why it is so devastating, because basically now you have a fault line that runs through the center which then means you're going to have a regrouping and people will going to have to decide. Let's not forget the former Socialist Party is polling at, what, between 2 and 4 percent? So good luck if you go slightly to the left of where Macron is today. Sorry for you, but there is no home for you. So you <clears> basically <throat> have to stay there or you're in a nirvana because the next available party is going to be La France Insoumise. And now that's a bit far if you're considering yourself a reasonable social democrat who wants the right thing and, you know, a mix of rights and obligations and, you know, a balanced law like what you said. So I think it's a really, really tricky situation. I don't envy you on this one. All right. In that report, Marine Le Pen uh, talking up, and you talk about a sort of a crossing of the Rubicon with this bill, talking up the notion of national preference, the, uh, national preference meaning Public spending and services go first to French citizens before foreign nationals. She claims the bill sets a precedent. With regard to the concept of national preference, once again there is no doubt that our ideas have won the day. And I don't see how the elected representatives of the majority, and the President of the Republic in particular, will be able to criticize us for defending national preference in the future, since they understand that it can be applied. Once again, they're doing the minimum, but in principle they've validated the concept, and obviously I can only be delighted. With this bill, Mireille Clapeau, there's no going back. It's for France, it's uh, fundamentally never going to go back to the way it was before when it, the way it treats its foreign nationals, its, 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 uh, the foreign nationals that are residents on its soil. First of all, I would like to remind you that um, the story is not finished because uh, we have to go through uh, the Conseil Constitutionnel and certainly some of the measures uh, will be uh, cancelled because they will be considered as illegal uh, in regard of the con our Constitution. And coming back to the national preference, uh, I'm not sure uh, it's, uh, it's the end also because uh, uh, is it pragmatic? Is it efficient? Uh, will it um, cause uh, a decrease uh, in, <clears throat> into the figures of uh, immigration? I don't think so. I think it will be more difficult for some uh, poor migrant family. And we have to evaluate a law uh, regularly. And certainly, I'm quite sure that uh, we will see that uh, it uh, has uh, some... Um, uh, inconvenience for the people, for the poor uh, migrant people, and that it doesn't provide any advantage. Jeremy Stubbs? Well, the, the bill itself ha contains mainly piecemeal measures. I mean, it's not a sort of dream of the <laughs> national rally come to life, as it were. Uh, and part of that is simply to set things in motion. And the question is, can they be stopped now that they're in motion? It seems, it seems unlikely. Uh, and part of the aim as well is to send out a message which says France isn't as friendly as it used to be. And if that, if that message does go out, then part of what, say, Marine Le Pen wants will have been achieved. But it, again, it's not only Marine Le Pen. Uh, 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 people say, oh, this is a national rally bill. Um, it's put together by the uh, Les Républicains, and as their, their leader in the... Um, 
National Assembly, Olivier Malek, said, this goes back to Charles Pasqua. Now, there's a name from the past. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there's considerable prehistory behind this. was this. The, 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 the former interior minister. Exactly, I under uh, Chirac uh, 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 and so forth. So this was... I mean, there, there is a, a long tradition behind this. It's now moving. Can it be stopped? I doubt it. So is this change or continuity? Léa Chambolsel, do you agree with Jeremy Stubbs? I, I, I'm quite concerned indeed with uh, what's happening because uh, one of the biggest um, saying of Macron when he was elected was to say that you people were voting for him in order to make sure that Marine Le Pen won't be elected. So um, we see that uh, a few a few months after his uh, re-election, uh, just over of a little bit of a year of a, after his re-election, that he's already um, making compromises mm. that are actually satisfying to the national uh, rassemblement national rally. So this is uh, very, for me, it's extremely concerning. And uh, what is going to happen within the full? upcoming years, like, honestly, is this going to be worse or um, it, they're paving the, 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 the road for Rassemblement National, like, really, every day, little by little, but surely they are paving the road. And then we are, we can be, like, quite concerned also by the fact that there is a responsibility there. I mean, if Marine Le Pen is elected in, 2000, in 2027, Macron is responsible, partly responsible for this. And, Wait, can uh, the responsible be a born? Lot of can you say of that the, the responsible face that. the responsible goes three ways? Uh, because uh, you heard Jacob Hessler saying uh, that uh, a lot of French people don't identify with the national rally, they don't identify with the government, but they don't identify either with uh, the, the leader of the left wing, op the uh, biggest opposition bloc, uh, Jean Luc Mélenchon, who they find uh, too extreme. Yeah, I, I I agree with that because I think the left the left in general in France has been um, um, has been uh, unable to actually build up a, a narrative a narrative and something that will be like an alternative to what uh, Macron offers or to what the right offers. Uh, when we see that the right is actually going further and further far right, um, we could have expected that uh, La Nupes could have come with like something stronger and something clearer for like the, the project of society that they will be like willing to be promoting. Um, and I, I'm I'm actually quite uh, quite um, um, sad in a way to see that uh, what's left now of the NUPES is almost <clears throat> nothing and that it's very hard for most of the political party on the left wing uh, in France to be able to actually like build up a new a new project for the society. Also because there is like uh, an obsession about migration in France and in many countries in Europe. Yeah, I the, the French president's been, sta been stating uh, that uh, this is what the French wanted. This is what the French wanted, but obviously, like it's been, uh, I, I've seen some polls um, regarding this, and I've seen that maybe like seventy percent. I've seen a poll from Elab for BFM TV. Sorry for the, for um, also the a Congress. good news channel. Anyway, <laughs> all right, <laughs> just had to mention because I just read yes. about it that seventy percent of the people that were actually like asked said that it was a good bill, that it was satisfied with it, etc. The 64. problem is that it's been it's been forty years that most of the governments and the political um, leaders have been absolutely obsessional about migration. We passed 30 bills in like 40 years. And the question is like, why? Why is immigration such an issue in most of the countries? Why political leaders come up with immigration for um, saying that it's the cause of all the problems in our society, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas the figures tell us that there are no crisis. There is no crisis in Europe of migration. It's, it's not true. We can't mm. end migration. It's the story of humanity. Like people will continue to migrate. Maybe some figures that will be interesting to, po to point out. There is 60,000 people that actually died in, in the world since 2014, so less than 10 years, over the process of migration toward international destination. And half of them were in, in Europe and Mediterranean region. No one talks about it. The reality is that thousands and thousands mm. and thousands of people are dying each year, and no one has the courage to be facing this.
The only people that come up and say, political leaders come up and say, migration is a problem. No, the, the problem is that we, our liberal democracy in Europe, leave people die at our borders. That's the biggest problem we need to be facing right now. And the left has to be facing that. So right now we have a bill that's, uh, 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 that's been passed, uh, the government no longer claiming a full ownership uh, of it, even though, as Mireille Clapeau said, that uh, the executive branch <laughs> did get involved in those negotiations. The president sending <clears throat> it on to the Constitutional Council for review. Let's listen to the government spokesperson, Olivier Véran. It doesn't stop us recognizing that there are elements of this law we don't like, that part of the French population doesn't like, that I don't like, but they don't discredit us. Some of these measures are particularly counterintuitive because they would hinder access to work for foreigners. We'll be re-examining some of those measures soon. So the government which wants to... Uh, 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 push measures that uh, allow undocumented workers who are sorely needed in many sectors uh, to, to stay in the country. Uh, joining us now is our politics editor, Mark Perlman. Mark, take a seat. Uh, Mark, you've been uh, watching the French president who's been speaking also on a very good channel, uh, France 5. Uh, uh, he's been uh, uh, granting a, a sort of a freewheeling interview uh, for the big evening politics uh, show there. Uh, what's his answer been? Well, he is clearly uh, willing to fight. Uh, he says, you know, I, I won't back down. Uh, this is not the bill I was dreaming of. That's not the government's bill, but it is a useful bill. He said, this is the shield. This is the expression he used that France still needs uh, because we need to both control uh, illegal immigration and better integrate. And he also went as far as to say that this was actually not a victory for the national rally, but a defeat for the national rally, because he said those propositions have nothing to do with the national rally. And that was the argument that was made by his prime minister on breakfast radio. But let me ask you, uh, did he address the fact that uh, one of his government ministers has resigned, that others are saying they'll be speaking in the coming days? He said, you know, this was the first question uh, put to him, you know, one of your government minister resigned because he disagreed uh, with uh, your bill and what it implies. And he says, well, you know, I respect his decision. Uh, this happens. I understand that this can uh, shock people, uh, but I remind people this is not what we uh, wanted, uh, but this is a good compromise. And when you are in politics, uh, there are some decisions that you have to make and have the courage uh, to endorse them. He says, you know, everyone is free to do what, what he wants, but he said, you know, there's no uh, crisis. We will continue. We'll push <coughs> this through. He said, however, that this will go before the Constitutional Council because there are some measures that might be deemed unconstitutional. And he said, there are some measures that I don't like. And in the public's eye, is this going to be seen as Emmanuel Macron's bill? as the Conservatives bill, as the National Rallies bill? Well, uh, obviously, Emmanuel Macron uh, says this, this was not his bill, but this is the compromise we reach because we have this relative majority in Parliament. This is unusual, but we have to uh, learn to uh, work with this. This is the situation where we have. But he said, I totally, uh, uh, for me, this is a, a good bill because it balances our goals which is to have less immigration. He said, yes, we have an immigration problem in France. We're not going to be invaded by migrants, but we have a problem with illegal immigration. And we also have a problem because some people work for years and years and years, and they need to uh, have documentation, and they will be granted documentation through uh, this bill. And uh, this is why uh, this cannot be seen as a victory for the national rally, because the national rally is totally opposed uh, to those uh, uh, to the, those people getting uh, their legal papers. And he said the National Front played a trick. They changed their mind at the last minute just to trick us. But people shouldn't uh, believe that this is exactly what they want. They want us to put in uh, to, to put us in a bad position. Mireille Clapeau, is the, what do you think of the president's messaging? I think um, we made two mistakes, and uh, from in front of each of these mistakes, we have to build a, a future. First mistake uh, is that, uh, we, as you mentioned, we should build a positive narrative about immigration. 
and uh, for the future, because if you remember, President Macron will not be candidate in uh, 2027, so we have uh, to build a political future, and I will take part in building a positive narrative, because for me, immigration is some, it's not something we have to build a shield against. Second thing, second mistake, is that it shouldn't be only uh, a question managed by the Minister of Interior. Uh, it's a trans uh, competence uh, <coughs> question. Uh, it's about health, it's about education, it's about jobs, about social welfare. And this has to be managed not only by bills. Uh, I don't want to live again uh, this, uh, all the, this uh, the drama. tension, uh, all this drama. And we have to build calmly public policies with money for it, with uh, um, maybe uh, resources, uh, concrete resources on the field, and not only these bills, and not never again uh, this drama. All right, the rest of Europe is watching the leader of Spain's far right Vox party, Santiago Abascal, uh, in Parliament there in Madrid, calling on Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez to quote, learn from his friend Macron when it comes to uh, immigration uh, reform. Jakob Hessler. Well, I think, <clears throat> I think learning, I don't know if it's learning <clears throat> from Macron. I think the, the, the real issue behind this is that I think there has been a huge shift, and I think it was said before, a huge shift in public attitude all over Europe, and it's a consistent shift. It's now half of the left, while it has positive attitudes, more positive attitudes to immigrants who are here and work, but half of them say there is too much. And so, based on this consensus, Macron was trying to navigate. I think the problem is he lost control of the narrative. I mean, it's very nice to say that actually, in fact, I didn't lose this, but if everyone else says so, then that's what matters. Perception creates the reality. And I think at least today, maybe he can pull out a trick from the hat and if he can go back, but it's going to be an uphill battle to regain the narrative for migration, that that's a subject that he does and that he does in a balanced way he's, between economic interest, fairness and humanity. He's not the only one. The, the, the political storm here in France overshadowing uh, what would have been the big news uh, out of Brussels uh, <laughs> this Wednesday. The 27 nations and the European Commission <clears throat> agreeing on an asylum overhaul, the first in several years. It fast tracks entry requests and calls for northern nations to bear more financial res responsibility for detention centers in places like Greece, uh, Italy and Malta. How many votes will that win the mainstream parties, Jakob, when we have European elections next June? I'm not sure, because the problem is, the problem is for so long, the topic was shunned, other <clears throat> than small countries like Denmark, where they have been a broad debate and then a political decision on it carried from broader part, I think what hits all the center, more traditional politicians now is if they now try to jump on the topic and try to own it, people will, I'm not sure they'll believe that they're credible owners of the topic. So they need to figure out a really clever spin to say, we now have a way of combining, let's say, growth, proper legal immigration and welfare and at the same time limit so that we get the good migration, which is what actually they tried to do by saying we want to increase the chosen migration, i.e. more like a green card model or more like what Canada does or, you, or <clears throat> Australia, which would be the measure you can tell to people whether that has any real effect on people, I'm not sure. Yeah, when immigration <laughs> became an issue in recent Dutch elections, it produced, well, a first ever win by the far right's Gert Wilders. Uh, with a post-pandemic spike in uh, immigration, both legal and illegal across the continent, is the issue across Europe right now, say pollsters. <coughs> Last Saturday, we saw the British Prime Minister uh, going to Georgia Maloney's uh, annual <coughs> uh, far-right rally in Rome, uh, where Richie Sunak uh, conversed uh, with both Maloney uh, and his Albanian counterpart, Eddie Rama. Making that deterrent credible will mean doing things differently, breaking from consensus. And both Georgia and I are prepared to do that. Georgia is planning to send asylum seekers to Albania to be processed, and I am passing legislation so that we can send illegal migrants to Rwanda. 
we are both determined to break the business model of these criminal gangs. We're not going to re-prosecute uh, that, uh, that, that, that asylum uh, bill in Britain, but his scheme to send uh, migrants to Rwanda pleases neither the left, neither his more hardline uh, backbenchers a, 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 at this point. Again, chasing after uh, the far right's message seems to be backfiring for Richie Sunak. Well, I think that the problem is that, um, let's be clear, the problem is not immigration as such, it's the state's inability to control immigration. And all of the Western European politicians who've been in power in recent years have shied away from the subject at their peril. It's come back to, to bite them in the behind, as it Why were. Why is it back in the forefront? It was, remember, in 2015, yeah. it was a huge story. Of course. Then we thought of, then other stories dominated, and now it's back. Why? It's the great difference between doing something about immigration or uncontrolled immigration and being seen to do something about it. Politicians have been trying to get away with being seen to do something about it. It's the problem that Rishi Sunak is in at the moment. He had this scheme, and it's just not, it's not panning out. Because, really, to solve this problem, as we were hearing earlier on, you need to consider a whole variety. It needs a whole sort of redoing of the system, internationally even. So the latest thing by Rishi Sunak is to appear with Georgia... When he came to Paris, they called it a is romance. A, this is called a yeah. love burst in the press. Yeah, but this is this is this is Richie Sunak, who is from a big tent mainstream conservative party that you belong to personally, going attending a rally. And there was, by the way, also the leader of Vox who yep, was uh, yep, at this yep. uh, same That's same. Right. Is that That's the right. right thing to be doing? Well, it's certainly something that he hopes will be effective because Italy is, in fact, a major partner of the United Kingdom now. It's one of its closest allies. This is, this is the big news. Right, but Much show, more even but than okay, France. But he could have gone to see Giorgio Maloney at the... Yeah, but the whole question of immigration at the is at the centre of it. And as you know, they met the leader of Albania at the same time. So there's a whole sort of um, symbiosis at work there. Who knows what it'll give rise to in the Mark end. Mark Proman, is it all of Europe that's chasing after... It seems so. I mean, All right. uh, from Scandinavia to uh, to Italy, uh, to the UK, to France, uh, obviously, to the Netherlands, uh, and you could even cross the Atlantic. We won't go there, but uh, obviously, <laughs> clearly, uh, I mean, yes, we had COVID, we had Ukraine, uh, we have Gaza, but immigration uh, has been uh, uh, at the forefront uh, in European politics in many countries. It's undone government. It's helped elect others, uh, and in France, it, it was was never going to vanish. And the president said, uh, you know, the French were waiting for uh, the spill. And if we didn't do it, this means we're not addressing the issues that the national rally uh, has been uh, addressing uh, with its wrong solutions, uh, playing on fears and so on. But he said, if we don't do it, uh, then we're lost. So basically, yes, you have the impression that uh, both the conservative and even <clears throat> centrist or would-be centrist like Macron are running behind the national rally. The national rally says, we have the recipe. Well, Georgia Maloney, we we're just talking about her, she just announced that they would give legal papers to half a million people. Why is that? Because they need people to work. So it's not so easy when you're in power in Italy, you're Georgia Maloney, suddenly you need Europe's money and mm. you need foreign workers. So uh, it's not that everything is um, set in stone, but clearly in France now, uh, Macron probably reads polls that we don't get to read. Uh, he sees that immigration is at the top of the list. Yes, there's purchasing power. And so he believes he needs to be seen as doing something, even though it's <coughs> difficult, even though it was chaotic in Parliament. But he hopes that he will get credit for that. Léa Chambosel, as uh, the person bringing the median age of this panel down, uh, what do you think about the fact that we do have an aging continent and this issue can <clears throat> only get more uh, front and center than it already is? Yeah, well, the problem is that in my generation, let's say, um, we're concerned about a lot of things and have the impression that uh, most uh, challenges we're facing as humans um, 
most of uh, our political leaders don't have it in hands. It's out of control. Let's say the climate change crisis uh, looks like they're not taking the right decisions. We saw we saw it with like COP twenty eight that was a that wasn't very successful neither. Um, the decisions that are made um, have um, impact on our lives every day, and it seems that uh, the political power in in power the politics in power sorry um, are not able to face most of our struggles. You have the inflation. Uh, issues also that are not facing. What is very easy for European leaders seems to be that they just blame immigration because that's it. You know, they, they but there, there's an increasing it. number of young people also voting far right. Are France's values changing? That's true. That's true because. As I was telling you, it's been decades that we hear that immigration is a problem. I hear it even now tonight on the on, on this channel. Immigration is a problem. Why? Just give me an answer. Why is it that everyone just supposed, <laughs> supposedly <laughs> believe that immigration is a problem? I need answers because I don't get it. What shows? I mean, it's not me. It's the OECD that is not known for being the the you know the most leftist um, organization in the world that points out that immigration has a lot of positive impact on at the national level, even when it comes to economy, when it comes to market, labor market, uh, to technology, etc. It really boosts uh, the economy. And the answer <clears> is <throat> we need to close the borders. Why? But, we don't but, know. But, 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 yeah, but, I think, but I think that's exactly for too long. Liberals like myself and others and economists have said immigration because of its, econ its very clear, undeniable economic benefits at an aggregate level for the entire economy. The problem is that European mm. societies, unlike, and even American societies moving to it, we have created losers. And those losers today feel that <clears throat> their rights and what they get from the state is less what these people get. And it's this spiral that's fueling that you could say is Rishi, Rishi's red wall problem. You could say here it's the whole northern France part of the Rassemblement National. Where there's a rust it's belt the, in the north of it's France. It's the left behinds that have taken on the topic because they feel generally left out. And so <clears> that is the topic then that they jump on. Could have been another one. You what, could say one final Gilles Jaune is in the same the yellow vest. One final question, because we're out of time. Mireille Clepeau, when you speak to your constituents, do you feel as though France's values are changing? I think that immigration is not uh, at all the first topic uh, they told me about. Uh, they are concerned about uh, climate change, if they are young or uh, difficulty to, to buy things uh, if uh, they are older. Uh, we, have, we need to have a debate about um, you know, the en ending of life. Uh, they don't tell me about immigration, but, but um, don't forget that uh, France was um, traumatized by uh, the terrorism. And two teachers were killed uh, by two young people mm -hmm. Uh, from uh, Chechnya, and this was uh, a trauma for the whole nation, and it could have <clears throat> a link with this obsession of uh, immigration. For me, it's not a problem of immigration. It's a problem of radicalization, of uh, mental health, of influence of the social networks. It's not a problem of uh, immigration. But that's true that in the public opinion, uh, it's uh, a, a trauma and it, it's important. Well, we're going to continue, obviously, to follow and the reactions as... Uh this story continues to develop. Mireille Klepo, I want to thank you. I want to thank Jacob Hessler, Mark Perlman, Jeremy Stubbs, Léa Chamboncel for being with us uh, from Lyon. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate.